Thanks, Sachin, and thanks to Roz Levy Jonas for hosting this incredible event. I am blessed to work with two wonderful, dedicated board chairs. And I want to thank the rest of the board members who are here tonight. Your leadership over the past year has allowed me to hit the ground running. But it's you guys, our wonderful supporters, who make all of this work possible. Every time someone congratulates me on a victory at NARAL, big or small, I remind them that this is a team and this is a movement. So thanks for being on our team and part of our movement. I also want to acknowledge all the members of Congress, representatives from the administration, and all of the state elected officials here tonight. You are our firewall against a movement dedicated to stripping us of our fundamental freedoms. And let's look at the landscape you're working in. State legislatures introduced 328 anti-choice bills last year. 328. They passed 53 of them into law. That's more than one a week. One anti-choice bill a week. It would take too long to list all of the obstacles opponents of choice put in our way. They closed our clinics. They forced medically unnecessary ultrasounds on us. They instituted mandatory waiting periods as though women need to be put in a timeout to make our own personal decisions. And they banned abortion. Some states as early as six weeks Women know that you don't even necessarily know you're pregnant at six weeks. And that's just their, their, their efforts to block our constitutional right to abortion. Who can forget late last fall when they tried to shut down the federal government insisting that bosses should get to decide whether their employees get contraception? And just last week, the House rammed through a bill that will raise taxes on small businesses who dare to provide their employees with insurance that covers abortion care. This was their chosen volley out of the gate in 2014. Not minimum wage, not immigration reform, not equal pay for women. I'll admit something. After I took this job, I was so genuinely perplexed by the single-minded focus on something that's none of their business that I looked up the definition of obsessive in Merriam-Webster's. <laughs> Guess what? It totally fits. A compulsive, often unreasonable idea or emotion. Don't these people sound compulsive to you? And I'm super glad the dictionary agrees that they're unreasonable. Here's the thing. Really, this is the thing. If there is anything more unreasonable than their narrow focus, it's their actions. You might have seen the Guttmacher study that came out last week that showed in the year 2011, the rate of abortion dropped to its lowest since 1973 because women and men have greater access to contraception and to accurate information to avoid an unintended pregnancy. If the anti-choice movement really wants to stop abortions like they claim, they should join hand in hand with us to promote birth control and comprehensive sex ed. But time after time after time, they vote against these common sense tools. Why? Because what they really care about is telling women and all people, for that matter, that it's their way or the highway, that there's only one right way for us to live our lives, and that they get to decide what that is. And that, my friends, is un-American. But we know, and guess what? They know, too, that the American people are on our side, that seven in 10 of us support the rights protected by Roe v. Wade, that we as a country agree that politicians should not make these decisions for women and families, because America thrives when no one is allowed to impose their personal morality on others. That is the essence of the religious liberty that we prize. I don't do anything against my personal faith, and I don't get to tell you what to do because of my personal faith. 
It's what separates us from so many countries around the world where women are not free. So if everyone's on our side, why does it seem like we're losing? How did they pass those 53 bills? What we're witnessing right now is the culmination of a strategy that the extreme right has been putting into place for decades. That's no exaggeration. They've spent 41 years, every day since the court handed down Roe, thinking about nothing but how to reverse the progress we've made. They elected extremists to the state legislatures, and then they redistricted their way into control of the House, and they paid special attention to getting like-minded people on the courts at every level. They know how important the courts are. They know how many cases defied, de decided there define the very fabric of who we are as a country. But there are dents in their armor. Anti-choice officials know they're outside of the mainstream, so they do everything in their power to obfuscate, distract, and hide their real agenda when they run for office. They talk about jobs or education or health care, but put reproductive rights into a made-up category they call social issues. We know that the ability to plan our families has everything to do with what jobs we get, whether we can keep them, get promoted, and achieve economic stability for the families we want. And I'll let you, you can applaud that. I like that line too. <laughs> and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. This is all they got. They're at the end of their strategy. And their overreach has begun to provoke a backlash that when we harness it, will catapult us into a conversation not just about protecting the gains we've made, but advancing policy that allows all people to have the freedom to decide how and when and with whom we have a family and to be supported once we do. The momentum is on our side, not theirs. You can see it when almost 100,000 people join us to condemn a judge who abuses his position on the bench and refuses to grant a woman her constitutionally protected right to abortion. You can see it when we win at the ballot box in places like Virginia and Albuquerque. And you can sure see it when Wendy Davis's historic filibuster brings tens of thousands of supporters to the state capitol and my home of Texas. We, the people in this room, are going to harness that momentum. We're going to go on offense. We're redefining the debate. And we're taking this fight to the other side. We're going to force their dangerous and outdated beliefs out into the open for everyone to see. When Governor Huckabee tells us to control our libido, I want to say to him, please, sir, keep talking. The more they talk openly about their ideas, the more we win. And winning means not just protecting what we have, but advancing a vision of reproductive freedom so it is real for all women in this country. That's why we're thrilled to support Governor Cuomo's Women's Equality Act, which combines reproductive freedom with much needed economic protections for women. And that's why I stood side by side with Senator Blumenthal and so many other pro-choice leaders, many of whom are in this room tonight, to help introduce the Women's Health Protection Act that would mandate equal access to abortion care regardless of what zip code a woman lives in. And that's why we work to make sure that all women who rely on the federal government for their medical care, including military service women, Peace Corps volunteers, and low-income women, are not discriminated against in their medical services. I've only been president of this historic organization for one year, and we're just getting started. Like any new leader, I know I stand on the shoulder of giants, including so many of you in this room. So I want you to take a minute and think 
Think about the first rally you attended, the first petition you signed, the first clinic you protected. Now stand up if you've been fighting for a woman's right to choose since 1960s. 1960s. Who's been fighting since the 1960s? Stand up. And how about the 70s? Who joined us in the 70s? Stand up now. All right, 80s. My first pro-choice rally was in the 80s. Who's the 80s? If you are a pro-choice activist from the 1990s, stand up. And if you've joined us in the last decade to fight this fight, stand up now. And if you are still sitting because tonight is your first action, stand up because this is an action being here tonight. Now everyone stop. Look around. Look at each other. Look at this room. This is a great team you've joined. Give yourself a round of applause for being on the right side of history and on the winning team moving forward. This is a beautiful sight. Thank you. Our culture and our politics are constantly shifting. It's the way of the world. And through those shifts, we at NARA will remain committed not to our mission just to protect abortion as ground zero of reproductive freedom, but to ensure women everywhere have the opportunities and the resources we need to build the lives we want, to have the careers we want, and to enjoy healthy, happy families when we choose them. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here, old friends and new. It's a joy to look out at this room tonight. Thank you.